After looking at uh, the experience very intimately, it is very natural to ask this question that uh, what is my relation to the experience? Which is same as asking what is my relation to all these objects, the world, the body, people, other creatures, environment, this mind, other minds, this universe, other universes and anything that can be experienced. The answer is very simple and uh, was introduced to you on the very first day very first episode of the series my relation to the experience is of oneness i am the experience i am all the objects i am all the bodies i am all the people i am all the creatures i am everything there is in the mind and i am the whole universe there is no division or separation between what i am and what is apparent here and we have seen that that's all exists i am and experiences are appearing to me this is our direct experience without the usual mental overlays and ignorance that colors it there are no two we have given it uh, formal names experiences that appears and the experiencer is to which it appears and the relation between the two is of oneness identity they are one and the same there are two aspects of one existence some people may try to get into this state of oneness by hook or crook but it is not a state of mind because the states of the mind they come and go as everybody knows there is waking state then there is dream state then there is deep sleep state and in these states there are a number of states the mind is sometimes peaceful sometimes agitated sometimes happy sometimes sad sometimes busy sometimes dull sometimes very clear sometimes confused and you will notice that these are the experiences states of the mind are experiences that have all the marks of the experience they are impermanent they are illusory their appearances are not true and so on but uh, whatever is said here about oneness is not a state of mind because it is exactly opposite of an experience so is it uh, the experiencer then if it is not the experience if it is not a state of mind or state of being then it must be the experiencer being in the experiencer knowing the experiencer and you will find that no that is not the correct definition because then the experience is left out if you say not two and then declare that i am going to ignore the experience that means there are still two we have just ignored the one aspect of it so when i say i am the experiencer it is also a thought in the mind you can club the mind together with the experience rise above the mind and then you will see that the oneness cannot be one of these aspects it has to be both unified oneness is the unification of the experience and the experiencer some people are going to say that uh, so oh, i get the oneness the universe is one it is made up of one thing one substance that is oneness that is non duality and you will find that they have left out the experiencer there is something which is looking at this claimed non duality so there is something which is outside the oneness now so it cannot be the real oneness the real oneness must include the experiencer in it all there is is experience it is being observed by the experiencer oneness is when the division between the experience and the experiencer disappears it is not a state of the mind and it is something which is above mind because mind goes in the category of the experience so it is not possible to get there by effort it is not possible to climb there by tricking yourself it is very easy actually if you let go the effort if you stop doing then because there is oneness because oneness is the truth it shines automatically it is what is left when there is no mind when there is no effort when there is no speech no activity that oneness shines although it is always there if it is true it must be true under all conditions it does not matter what is the experience it does not matter how it is being experienced there is oneness which is not dependent on anything else so your non doing your letting go of the efforts does not create oneness it simply shows it more clearly it is not possible to unify the experience and the experiencer you can only see that they are unified 
you can only drop your belief that they are separate if it is true that they are one then they must be one right now also if they are one there is no way to unify them they are already unified then there must be something which is preventing you from looking at the oneness and it is ignorance it is presence of blind beliefs and assumptions only you can drop your ignorance you cannot create oneness magically so how to do that how to establish that uh, my nature is non dual my nature is oneness as you know on the path of knowledge there are only two means to gain this knowledge the first is the direct experience and the second is logic so although we have done it in this series a few times today let's close the case for once and for all you already know that i am the experiencer this was uh, established in episode number 15 on self realization now you need all you need to do is uh, establish that you are the experience also and the oneness is established the way of direct experience is most natural but it can be more difficult also because of the presence of all the mental overlays thoughts assumptions beliefs they go very very deep so a lot of effort goes into removal of the mental overlays over what is there is oneness right now right here but there is ignorance of it and this knowledge is absent so how to use the direct experience to overcome the ignorance by now you must have removed a lot of it if you have gone through the last 19 episodes of this series probably nothing is remaining now so the mind is already pure if it is not if there are questions and doubts then you should go through the series again or ask me most of your blind beliefs must have been burnt out by now so you should be able to see everything as it is you should be able to discard the mental overlays discard the indoctrination discard your pet beliefs religious beliefs your education anything that you heard here and there anything that you read here and there indoctrination takes many forms so discard all that you must have sharpened the instrument of the mind by now so you can experience that which is directly this is the pure experience direct experience is this experience which is not polluted by ignorance so your current experience is of oneness right now right here whatever is being experienced or known is oneness this is not very difficult to see you will never find a thing called experience and you will never find a thing called experiencer what you find right now right here if you look with a pure mind is that there is experiencing experiencing is all there is you do not see the experience on your left and the experiencer on your right one doing something with other what you see is one conscious stream of appearances this is the most direct experience of oneness that is possible it is right now right here it is very simple it is very plain there are no explosions no fanfare no bells and whistles <laughs> it is your normal everyday experience it is oneness so look at it again what is seen is there an experience separate from the experiencer or is there simply experiencing this experiencing is oneness that is all there is everything else is divisions separations concepts ideas blind beliefs assumptions imagination delusion conditioning education indoctrination madness darkness ignorance impurities of the mind it looks like you were living under the mountain of impurities but it is very easy to drop this mountain that which is is right now right here there is just experiencing the experiencing is oneness i am not experiencing oneness the experiencing is oneness it is not going to go away it never goes away what changes are appearances experiencing is stationary the appearances are empty to which it appears is empty and this emptiness is oneness this is the background that is unchanging this is the ocean which remains even though there are waves on the ocean so here you can climb out of the duality and stay it is very natural state you don't need to do any kind of circus to see the oneness you cannot say that i experience the oneness that will be wrong statement because then there is i and there is experience of something you are still in duality that means 
I am the oneness. This is the right statement. Once you state this, there is nothing more to say actually. The silence is experiencing and the silence is oneness. If you cannot reach here due to some reason, due to there still being impurities, you can take a look at the interdependence of the experience and the experiencer. Have you ever seen an experience which was devoid of the experiencer, which took place without the experiencer? The answer is no. It is not even possible to have an experience without the experiencer. And have you seen the experiencer without there being any experience? This can be a tricky question. You know, some people have this kind of belief that, that the experiencer exists if there are no experiences. But it is impossible to establish this belief. It takes a mind to say it. And the mind is the experience then. It takes senses and mind and memory to see that something was experienced and to conclude that there is an experiencer of it. And then this is the experience. Some people can say, no, last night there was no experience at all. There was only me. There was only the experiencer. If there was only you, how did it get impressed on the memory? How can you make this statement? How can the mind say this, that only I was there? This knowledge must be impressed on the memory somehow. If it is impressed on the memory, it has to be an experience. So, some people can delude themselves like this, but the fact is, there is no experiencer without an experience. And even if you don't go into such tricky business, the rule is very clear here that if something is true, it must be true all the time. And so, even with the experience present, the oneness must be here and now. Otherwise, the oneness would be there in absence of the experience, where only the experiencer is present, and the oneness would go away as soon as the experience appeared. But this is never seen. So the fact that both are always together, the experience and the experiencer, it establishes that they are one, being seen as two aspects. Just like uh, the, the sides of a coin cannot separate them, but you can see them one at a time. But they always occur together. A better example is milk and water. When they are mixed, you can see them as separate. Your mind tells you that, look, there is water in the milk. And there is milk in the water, but you cannot really separate them. There is one more way to directly experience the oneness, although it is not an experience. It is to find any separation between the experience and the experiencer. We can define what it means to be separate. We can take an ordinary definition of the word separation. For example, there must be a distance between the two things if they are separate. A space must be there. There can be a difference in time. If they are separated in time, one happens before the other or one happens after the other. And there has to be a boundary. One thing ends at one place and another thing starts at some place. Or you can define separation as anything at all. Anything that you wish. One has to be in another dimension and the second has to be in another dimension. Something like this, you can cook up any definition of the separation. Imagine it. And now try to find the separation between the experience and the experiencer. Many people fall for this trick. It is very funny to observe them. When I ask them, take any object and tell me how far are you from that object? And many people, they actually tell me in meters, I am three meters away from this object. So, here, that person has lost the awareness of being the experiencer. The identification with the body has taken over habitually. And because everybody thinks that I am the body, whenever I say, tell me how far away are you? And they will tell me the distance from the body to the object. Yes, the body is so many meters away from the object. That is true. But then where is the body? The body is just another object. You are not the body. So in order to see the oneness, you see, you should be established in the experiencer. You should be already established in your real nature. Otherwise, obviously the body is separate from everything. If your identification is with mind or mental processes or anything imaginary, of course it will be different or separate from other things. So that is why the experiencer was introduced before the experience. And that is why the self-realization was given before the realization of oneness. Because without self-realization, there is no way to arrive at oneness. 
many people try to get to the oneness without realizing their real nature first and they fail miserably they will do such things just like i said they will treat themselves as body and then obviously body is totally separate from everything else your oneness is just your own delusion they will declare it it is a fake thing no i'm not one with anything the hard truth is that i am separate and everything else is separate and i must fight with this separation to stay alive to preserve myself this is an ignorant mind there is no self realization here so you will find that yes two objects can be separate in distance in space i am not an object i am the experiencer this background on which all the experience appears and the experience is not separate in a space like manner from the experiencer there is no separation there is no gap there there is no distance there it is very easy to see actually it is very easy to understand this now you can define the separation as being separate in time in a time like manner and you can ask whether the experience is happening first or the experiencer is happening first or is the experience come coming later than the experiencer or something like this and you will find no they are simultaneous in fact there is no time all there is is experiencing in a eternal fashion the experiencing is not happening in time you can recall the memories and all but they are also timeless they are now they are in the present moment always you can recall all the history and you can project all the future but it is now that event has happened now there is only now this eternal now the experience does not come before the experiencer the memory gives us an illusion that experiences are happening uh, throughout the past the whole past is right now right here as memory you can try to find a boundary of the experience and the boundary of the experiencer which we have done in the past episodes we found that there is no boundary they are infinite both are infinite can two infinities exist without boundaries while being separate this is very absurd idea so they are intertwined they are mingled it is like milk and water no boundaries and as a homework you can do any kind of experiment by defining the separation in any possible way some people are going to say that there is a separation there but the experience is changing and the experiencer is unchanging well that is a difference that is not a separation the changing is happening in the unchanging this is all your experiencing is going to tell you that all the change is happening in the unchanging we are talking about separation we are talking about a gap we are not talking about the nature of the experience or the experiencer is their nature are different because we chose to look at these two aspects separately when you separate you can tell talk about different nature different characteristics of it but when you see that there is no separation then the natures also intermingle they mix together now in the experiencing the experiencer is seen as changing and the experience can be seen as static there is no difference at all the difference appears when you choose to look at them separately when this uh, first division happens between the experience and the experiencer we can talk about their characteristics we can talk about their and the differences in their nature anyhow we saw that the experience is emptiness and the experiencer is emptiness so ultimately <laughs> their nature is same so yes the experience will be seen as changing but only when it is seen as separate from the experiencer otherwise nothing is seen as changing really because as we saw in the last episode that the change is an illusion produced by the memory you can see it is being produced by the mind also and the activity of the memory produces the illusion of the change also in the oneness there is no change you can include the illusion produced by the memory of change as experience you can treat it as experience and then the difference also goes away is it static no it is not static at all but it is not dynamic in the sense that it is happening in time it has potential that all can be said it has potential to be dynamic it has potential to be non static a static emptiness is not even emptiness there is nobody to know it it is dead so just like i said you may need to rise about the mind and its concepts here because none of these concepts they apply in oneness not static not dynamic and it is static and it is dynamic no time but there is time no memory but there is memory no mind but there is mind there is experience but no, not 
separate from the experiencer and there is experiencer but not separate from the experience. It may sound like paradoxical because we are using the language of ignorance to describe that which is true. These languages, they lack these words. You are trying to use a language where silence is sufficient. If you start describing, you will be lost in mind. If you just look, it is right here, right now. As I said, the very first division is the division between the experience and the experiencer. This division is a mental activity. The attention shifts from that which is appearing to that to which it is appearing. And to that which the experience is appearing is emptiness, cannot be seen. It is the experiencer. So mind forms an image of it, says that there is an experiencer and the attention shifts from the experience of the objects to the experience of this knowledge that there is experiencer. This knowledge that there is an experiencer is awareness. That is how I defined it, the word awareness. So that the shift of the attention happens between the experience or the objects or the illusions to the awareness because the attention cannot be given to the experiencer. It cannot be seen. The picture cannot attend to the screen. Picture can only attend to other parts of the picture. The attention flickering is happening on the screen. So this is a mental activity. You can see it very clearly. It is also seen. If it is mental activity, if it is any kind of experience, it will be experienced. Right now it is buried under ignorance. Buried under this identification that I am this activity. I am shifting my attention from one experience to the other experience. I am trying to find the oneness in the body somewhere. I am trying to find it in the head. I am trying to find it behind the closed eyelids. I am trying to find it by silencing the mind somehow. The identification is with all this activity. This is doing. This is effort. And this effort is also seen. This effort is also experiencing. So when you include the dividing activity of the mind as another part of the experience, you will find that what remains is experiencing. It is a state which is not devoid of mental activity. There can be mental activity. You can keep dividing n number of times. But as long as this dividing activity is taken as a whole, objects, bodies, people, sounds, experiencer. You see, this whole is one experience. This is what the mind has done. It has shifted its, its attention from many things. And it is doing it in a circle. It keeps doing it. Because the mind does not know anything else actually. You can, the mind cannot rise to the experiencing. It can only stop doing what it is doing. But uh, even without that, you will see that whatever activity is it is doing is just another experience which is happening on this silent background of the experiencer and all there is, is experiencing. So let there be divisions, let there be separations. See them as they are and you are left with oneness. All these divisions are happening in oneness. It is not that the oneness is divided into two by the mind or mental activity. Only that the mind produces an illusion of two. It is just a thought. Oneness cannot be divided. There is another very simple way to directly see the oneness. And we are going to use another word for it. Because somehow for some people the word experiencer does not give them a solid feeling. It is too cerebral. It is too philosophical. So let's use uh, common language here. You can see the objects because there is a perception of it or there is a cognition of it or there is a consciousness of it. In ordinary language we say I am conscious of the objects and that usually means that uh, the experience is being experienced by the experiencer. So one word says it all. I am conscious of the object or I perceive the object. Obviously, without consciousness, there cannot be perception. So, the, the, the meaning of these words is one, same. Now, let us see. What is the difference between the object and consciousness of the object? Those who are familiar with the word consciousness will immediately find that there is no difference. There is no separation. There is no two-ness there. Or you can use the word perception here. What is the difference between an object and perception of an object? Does the object exist apart from the perception of it? Your mind is going to tell, you see, that oh, it was there yesterday also and I am seeing it now. That means it must have persisted. But uh, you are going to the memory now. Stay in the present. The, if the truth is in the present, it will be true in the memory, in the past also. 
if the perception of the object is the object now in the present moment the perception of the object is going to remain the object in future and it will remain so in the past so it is important for you to remain in the present just establish the identity of the consciousness of the object and the object itself in present and you will know that it was always like this and it will be always like this now what is the difference between consciousness of an object and the object itself right now this is one way to kick out the mind and use your direct experience pure experience to see the unity look at it it is experiencing it is oneness witnessing the oneness as appearances obviously other thoughts are going to come in your mind but you can handle them i'm pretty sure there is another way to kick out the mind and see the oneness see in quotes and that is to ask the question where is the experience by where obviously i mean a location where is the experience happening you can ask this question in stages like you can ask you can take an object and ask this question where is the object the answer can be that the object is on the table now you can include the table into the experience you can say where is the table on which this object is there and obviously it's on the floor where is the floor it's the house where is the house and so on now you will find a widening of the experience is happening here you will find that the whole universe is your experience actually and where is this whole experience this is the final question now there is no other place to put the universe in and here the mind can stop here the mind can overcome its conditioning a little bit because it does not have any answer now where is all this and you will find very surprisingly that it is there where the experiencer is we saw that the experiencer is non local and surely enough you find that the experience is also non local the locations are seen as appearances because the view of the mind is very very narrow <laughs> it cannot it cannot go beyond locations you trick the mind into silence now there are no answers now the ignorance cannot speak here but the truth is right now in front of you the experience is where the experiencer is there is no separation there is no separate location of the experience so these are some of the ways in which this ignorance of duality can be overcome it is very very easy it does not take uh, 20 years of meditations and whatever see no effort if you do a lot of effort well, that is more mental activity then more divisions will be produced more confusion will be produced it is effortless you will need to make some effort to become effortless it is reverse of what you always thought you get everything by effort and so you try to do any effort to get the oneness also and that is counterproductive now i must mention here that there are more ways to arrive at the experience of oneness by unusual means for example by stilling the body you achieve a great control over the body keep it still for days and days and days that has an effect on the mind and probably results in a oneness kind of experience which is not an experience there are ways to still the activity of the mind so that it remains in that state to overcome the mind by force or by continuous training of it there are ways to achieve this by apparently supernatural means but uh, on the path of knowledge we do it simply we don't take this much trouble because it is right now right here the oneness is right now right here it uh, does not require so much trouble only if you fail to see the oneness only you fail to grasp it get the knowledge of it then you should take up another path which requires effort and all that effort goes into purification of the mind into dropping of the beliefs i have seen that people drop their beliefs then they pick up another set of beliefs that are totally bizarre and strange so that must be done only when no choice remains only when you cannot use the normal means of attaining oneness use something strange an extraordinary an extreme depending on your interest actually otherwise it is very very natural if you have gone through the earlier episodes then you will be established in the oneness within 5 minutes only a hint is needed all you need to ask is what is my relation to the experience and since you are already established in the experiencer not identified with anything else you will immediately see that the experience is the experiencer that which is seen is seeing itself 
Now let us take a look at the other way to establish the non-duality which is the way of logic. Although now it may not seem so important, the first argument is very simple that uh, there cannot be two realities. If we assume that there are two independent realities, the experience and the experiencer as separate and independent, then logic says that uh, there is no possibility of any contact between them because they are independent. one can exist without the other and if there is a contact between them then it is as good as saying that it is one reality because the first can access the other the second can access the first it has become one reality it has become it has merged into one reality and that is what we do observe that the experiencer is in complete and eternal contact with the experience the experience is happening on the experiencer the waves are happening on the water that is what we have seen that it makes no sense to call the waves as a separate existence you cannot separate the waves out of the water if you want to have a separate reality you must take the water with it, with it and then you can claim that oh that way those waves are happening somewhere else in some other water my water is still and stagnant here so that the other water and waves they become the experience and this water becomes the experiencer and now no contact is possible in this metaphor also because as soon as the two waters meet they become one water it becomes one experiencer and the waves they have a access to disturb the first water the experience leaks into the stationary experiencer it again becomes one reality so similarly you can imagine multiple realities and number of them and the logic always brings us back to the necessity that there has to be one reality there can be many aspects of it but the ground of it the substratum is always one the differences must be apparent only there are no real boundaries no real parts in this water of existence there is a second argument in the logic uh, department that uh, there are only two categories here we observe one is the experience and the other is the experiencer there is no third and is logically impossible that is what we saw in the preceding analysis and out of these two categories one is false that also was established earlier if out of two categories one is false that means it is illusory it does not really exist independently what remains what remains is one one category only and this is the most direct logical argument that i found so far all you need to show is that uh, all the experience comes into the category of falsehood is illusory and then it is simple logic to deduce that there is only one reality there there is only one truth there that is what we see there is another argument which can be stated like this that uh, it is not possible to establish the experience independently of the experiencer and it is it is not possible to establish the experiencer independently of the experience so if you assume that the experience is one reality which is untouched and independent of the experiencer you won't be able to really establish it because in order to establish it in order to know it for sure it must be experienced you will need to bring in the experiencer and as soon as it is experienced the reality of the experiencer is also established simultaneously and since it is not possible to establish these two categories independently of each other there must be one category this is what logic says if you want to define two categories that are real which means they exist independently of each other there must be a way to establish both of them without invoking the other in any way and you can try it as a homework to do that there is another less known uh, argument which uh, is based on the necessity of the experiencer why is there an experiencer why can't we have a reality where there is only experience anyhow it is empty so it can be empty with all the possibilities there without being experienced this is the famous dead world argument if there is a world and it is independent why is there a need to consciously observe it why why do we need consciousness or even perception to keep it in existence i mean we don't see any necessity of there being an experiencer so since there is an experiencer it looks like that 
the argument is actually opposite because now there is no need of an experience the existence can exist without any experience without any objects with all its possibilities while there being only the experiencer which is conscious of itself which is experiencing itself as formless spaceless timeless reality so it seems it is necessary to have the experiencer and the experience is totally unnecessary and since the experience part is false it is it does not exist it has a dependent existence and the only utility of the experience seems to be to provide a hint of its own existence to the experiencer it seems that the argument is totally opposite if it is based on the sound logic which means it sh- the logic must be based on actual observation yes we can assume things we can fantasize about a reality where there is no experiencer but it will be a fantasy and who is witnessing this fantasy i mean it is not possible to have it as a fantasy without witnessing it first and even if it is postulated it won't be possible to establish it even as a fantasy we cannot establish it so it is a very solid necessity that there cannot be anything else except this existence which is basically the experiencer as substrate where the illusory experience appears which gives it a hint that i exist there is no other way for the existence to be there is no other way for the reality to be no other configurations are possible and logic tells us this all other arguments are going to be unsatisfactory so as a homework you can try many arguments you can try to find many configurations of the reality of this existence with experiencer without experiencer with many experiencers with many experiences and so on which people have done here because somehow they cannot accept the simplest and most necessary formulation somehow their minds want more spice cannot ac- accept that which is self evident so every seeker should go through all these theories and uh, fantasies before accepting the non duality and it is almost guaranteed that you will come to non duality you will arrive at non duality after running from post to pillar try the innumerable kinds of philosophies that are out there being proposed by deluded minds some are fearful minds they cannot accept the simple statements and uh, very safe statements that this body is illusory the thought of it sends shivers down their illusory spine and so they cook up some other philosophy which uh, gives them a comfort many of these philosophies are based on fear only now these people do not know that it is perfectly safe to be an illusion actually there is no other safety here if you are real as a body it is still going to die <laughs> your philosophies does not guarantee immortality they do not even guarantee happiness what the guarantee is uh, sweeping under the carpet of your fears probably not for long so any intelligent person any fearless person any true seeker will ultimately arrive at non duality in one form or the other and i have done that after running around for many many years finally non duality non dualism or the path of knowledge was found to be most satisfying and most beautiful most elegant so here we have reached the milestone after 20 episodes and after this we are going to explore the illusion we are going to dip our toes in the water find out how deep it goes it is totally optional there is really no need to study it but it is for the curious minds so the coming episodes are going to be highly detailed sometimes borderlining on madness and very strange so just to end uh, this episode this milestone i'm going to give you some historical notes which are not really historical i'm not going to teach you the history and just some mentions in the history of the same realization same realization of oneness which many great masters have uh, arrived at in last many thousand years so the word non dual comes out of the sanskrit advait which means non dual not to the state which is non dual which is independent of the states of the mind is called turiya which means fourth it is the ground of all the states which come and go that which comes and goes is false on which 
it happens is the fourth one which is true which is the non dual state which is the state right now right here actually on which the other states are manifesting to be established in this non duality is samadhi which literally means to remain in the middle not to dwell too much on the experience side and assuming the experience is real and so on and not to dwell too much on uh, the experiencer side assuming the experience to be false and to be discarded and so on to be in the middle you can translate it as equanimity also and your current state is actually of samadhi if you remove all the mental overlays which are just distractions the samadhi cannot be taken away it can hide behind the mental overlays you cannot come in samadhi state it is already there you can come out of the distractions in the equanimity in many traditions this uh, eventual realization of non duality is called yog or union twisting your bodies and breathing and all those things eating this vegetable and that vegetable is not yog that is stupidity you are in yog right now you are in union right now in some traditions like buddhism and all there is a mention of the word nirvan which means dissolution complete absence this is what is our current state right now also we are in nirvan all right now everyone although the knowledge of it is more or less so when this knowledge is put into practice nirvan results so we are going to talk about these words more in coming episodes in simple plain english without going into too much historical content and too much convoluted and embellished esoteric languages stay tuned